Okay, so Emmanuel Zacchini is getting launched from the cannon, and he's going to land 69 meters away at the same height he was fired at. So what is the force needed to do this to him is what they're asking. Well, our strategy here is to first find out how fast does he need to be going at this angle of 53 degrees so that he goes 69 meters. And once we know how fast he needs to be going, then we can figure out the force inside the cannon to accelerate him from rest up to that speed. Okay, so first we're gonna treat it like a projectile problem and working separately in the X and the Y like we usually do for projectile problems. Write down what we know. We know his range or his distance in the X direction is 69 meters. The initial velocity in the X direction is the X component to that uh, velocity calculated right here. We know in the X direction there's zero acceleration and the time is unknown. Then in the Y direction, our displacement in the Y is zero because we end at the same height that we started at. So there's no Y displacement. My Y component of velocity is calculated here and my acceleration in the Y, negative 9.8 meters per second squared and my time is unknown. So I'm gonna choose these two equations in the X and the Y which give me two equations with two unknowns, and I can solve for the initial velocity, 26 and a half meters per second. That's using our traditional way of solving it. Uh, if you want, there is a simpler way. You could use the range equation, which was given to us in chapter four, and here it is, and you can see we can come up with the initial velocity at much Sim in a much simpler way. Just be aware, this equation is not provided to you on the AP equation sheet that is provided with the AP test in May. So you have to memorize this equation, and if you get it wrong, it will hose you. So it's your choice. Memorize the equation and use it, or stick with our traditional way of working separately in the X and the Y. Yes, it's a little more work, but these equations are on the AP equation sheet. Okay, so now we know our initial velocity. Now let's find the acceleration needed to get it get Emmanuel up to the speed. And of course, once we know the acceleration, we can figure out the force uh, needed to do that because we know his mass. Now the acceleration, they told us it's constant acceleration so we can use equations of motion. So here's the equation I'll use. I know that I need to go from rest up to 26.5 meters per second in a distance of 5.2 meters. That was given to us as the length of the cannon through which he is being accelerated. So when we solve for the acceleration, we see that it is 67.3 meters per second squared. Keep in mind that is along the direction of 53 degrees. Now, if there was no gravity, it would be a very simple application of Newton's second law, just finding out the force needed to accelerate mass 85 kilograms to with an acceleration of 67.3. So just calculating that uh, 85 times 67.3 gives us a force of 5720 or 5720 newtons. This is not correct. Why is this wrong? Well, in Newton's second law, the net force, well, that little word net has a big meaning. It means you have to look at all the forces acting on Emmanuel while he's accelerating. So, of course, it's not just the force of the cannon. There's also gravity is acting on Emmanuel. And while he's inside the cannon sliding along the barrel, there is also a normal force from the cannon acting on Emmanuel. So let's look at those forces. So here I've drawn a force diagram with our traditional coordinate system with X axis being horizontal and Y axis being vertical. So here's the force from the cannon tilted up at an angle of 53 degrees. The normal force of course is perpendicular to the cannon surface. So that's drawn perpendicular to the 53 degree direction. And then weight of course is always vertically straight down. 
So if I want to solve this with my traditional coordinate system, I show it here, but I'm not going to go through it because this, this is not the recommended way to do it. Uh, you can see here how much work is involved using my traditional coordinate system. If I do it this way, I would have to resolve F into X and Y components, the normal force into X and Y components, and I would have to use X and Y components of acceleration on the right side of the equation when I do F equals MA. And I do come up with an answer. Uh, you can pause the, the video here and look at this in detail if you want to, but I want to show you it's much easier if instead we take our coordinate system and we rotate it so that our acceleration and our movement is along the x-axis. Because when we do that, what we're going to find is the forces in the y, because there is no acceleration in the y direction, the forces in the y are going to cancel each other out. And I don't have to worry about those. So the normal force, I don't care about it because that's in the y direction now. And there's no acceleration in the y. All I care about is the x direction. So I have my force from the cannon and the x component of my weight. Here it is. So when I say the sum of the forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x, 67.3 was my acceleration. That is now entirely in the x direction. So I can use that number. And the x component of weight is calculated here, mass times gravity times the sine of 53. So that's shown here. And it's in the negative x direction. So my sum of the forces is just F minus this x component of weight. I come up with my answer 6.4 times 10 to the third newtons when I take into account there are only two significant figures in this problem. And you can see this is certainly much simpler than all this work here if we had stuck with our traditional coordinate system. So that is going to be a common strategy is to rotate our coordinate system so that the x direction is the direction of motion and acceleration.